In this video series, I'll be walking you through how I created this interactive dashboard. All of this was done using Cordo, GitHub Actions, and GitHub Pages. It was completely free to create and to host, and all the interactivity that you see here is powered by observable JavaScript without the need for a shiny server. This dashboard displays the today's top hits playlist from Spotify and is automatically updated every day at 9 a.m. without me needing to do anything at all. I never have to render any of this code locally since GitHub Actions takes care of everything for me. And the code is 100% reproducible because this project uses RENV to manage all the R packages and packaged versions. I created this dashboard as my submission for POSIT's 2024 table contest. And my idea with my submission was to combine as many different tricky components as possible into one Cordo project. Throughout this series, we'll talk about how to create and style Cordo dashboards, how to publish them for free using GitHub Pages, and how to automatically update them on a schedule of your choosing using GitHub Actions, how to include passwords and other confidential information as part of your GitHub Actions workflows, how to use Observable JS to add interactivity to your dashboards, how to use the Hitter2 package to access APIs, and of course, how to use the GT package to create beautiful interactive tables. This playlist contains seven videos, and in this series, we'll build up this dashboard step-by-step step from scratch. I've designed this playlist though, in such a way that each topic has its own video that's fully self-contained. That means that you don't need to watch all seven of the videos in this playlist in order to get value out of the video that you're currently watching. If you do watch all seven though, you'll be able to completely reproduce this dashboard and you'll also have all the tools you need to create a similar project of your own. My name is Melissa Van Bussel and I make videos about our programming and data science. If you find these tutorials helpful, please consider subscribing to my channel since it really helps me make more videos. Without further ado, let's jump into this video's topic. In this video, we'll be learning how to use Observable JS to create interactive Cordo dashboards that look, feel, and behave like Shiny, but that don't need a Shiny server. You can use GitHub Actions and GitHub Pages to completely host your interactive dashboard without needing to pay any money and without needing to render anything locally. For this example, I have a very simple dashboard that is currently a work in progress and what this dashboard is eventually going to have is a table right here that's going to have the Today's Top Hits playlist from Spotify. And in the last video, we talked about how you can embed a Spotify web player directly within the Cordo dashboard so that you can play a song on the dashboard. And what we're going to do in this video is talk about how we can add a drop down menu right here that will interactively allow us to change the song that's displayed in the embedded web player. To do this, we're going to be using Observable JS or Observable JavaScript. And if you're looking to learn more about Observable JS or Observable Plot, I really recommend this video where Alison Horst gives a walkthrough of how to use Observable Plot. It's only an hour and a half long and it's aimed at our programmers who don't have any background with JavaScript. And after watching this video, I found that I was able to put Observable JS into practice fairly easily just from this one video. In order to do this, you will want to make sure that you have a more up-to-date version of Cordo installed. I'm using version 1.4 and incorporating Observable JS into your Cordo documents is very straightforward. It works basically the exact same way as including an R chunk or a Python chunk or something like that. So we use three backticks and then instead of writing R, we just write OJS. If you do need to use any chunk options, like for example, echo equals false, then the way that you do that in an OJS cell is by doing two forward slashes followed by a pipe. Here, I'm going to set the chunk option expandable to false. Whereas the syntax for cells that use R are a little bit different. It's the hashtag and then the vertical line. 
And for this example, I'm going to be using a data frame that I created in a previous video, which was called Top Hits DF. So let's take a quick look at what that looks like. So this is a table that has a bunch of songs from Spotify, has the song name, the song ID, artist name, a link to an image for the album art, and so on. These are the 50 songs that are currently on Spotify's Today's Top Hits playlist. And the song that's currently embedded in the dashboard is this song right here. But what we want to have instead is a drop-down menu where the user can select one of the 50 songs here, and then the web player will update and display the song that the user has selected. First, we're going to need a way to send our R data frame to JavaScript so that it's accessible to us in these OJS code cells. To do that, we're going to create an R code chunk, and I don't want the output from this chunk to show up in my dashboard. So again, I'm setting echo to false and include to false. And then I'm using the OJS define function. And the thing that I want to send to the OJS code cells is the top hits DF. And that's our R data frame here. But then on the left, we need to say what we want that variable to be called when we access it through the OJS cell. So I'm going to call this top hits OJS. And now what this line of code is doing is it's saying, I want to take my top hits DF R data frame and make it accessible inside of my OJS cells with the variable name top hits OJS. From here, before we can actually use the data, we need to transpose it so that it's in a format that is understandable by OJS. And I'm going to call it top hits, and that's going to take the value of the transpose of the top hits OJS that we had defined up here. From here, we can create the drop-down menu of the songs. I'm going to call it song dropdown. And to create a drop-down menu, we type inputs.select and then open round bracket. And the options that I want to have that are going to be clickable in the drop-down are going to be coming from the song name variable from the top hits DF. So we'll take our top hits data and we're going to use the song name variable. We can add a label that the user will see beside the dropdown. And then we also want to set unique to true. And this is just going to ensure that none of the songs are repeated in the dropdown. It's pretty unlikely in this scenario that there would be any duplicate song names in the same playlist, but in theory it could happen. And now let's render this. And I'm getting an error here because this O should be lowercase, so I'll re-render. And I've got another typo. Apparently I spelled transpose wrong, so let's fix that and render a third time. And this time it worked. So now I have a drop down that has all of the songs from the top hits DF. But right now when I change what's selected, it isn't updating this web player. So we still have another step left. Now this part right here, I was able to make this from watching that YouTube video where Alison Horst walks through how to use some of the basics of Observable. But for the next part, I actually used ChatGPT to figure out how to get the web player to update based on the selection from this dropdown. Note that this string right here is the track ID or song ID for this song. So notice here, this starts with 2GXR, and if I go to this top hits data frame, I can see that the song that's currently embedded is this song right here, which has a song ID that matches this URL right here. So now I'm going to ask ChatGPT to write some code for me, and the message that I'm going to send says, I have a data set defined in OJS called top hits, which has a variable called song name and another variable called song ID. Using only OJS, show me how to embed the HTML below. And I've copied the iframe HTML at the bottom. Show me how to embed the HTML below 
replacing the value of the string 2GXR, etc., with the song ID variable that corresponds to the same row of the top hits data set where the value of song dropdown, and remember that song dropdown is the variable that contains the song that the user has chosen from the dropdown. So where the value of song dropdown is equal to song name. And then I provided the definition of song dropdown and the HTML that needs to be embedded. And this is what it gave me. So let's go ahead and copy that in and see if we can get it to work. Let's render. And now I have a dropdown that when I change the song, the embedded song changes as well. Of course, we've still got a lot of work to do with styling the rest of this dashboard, but we'll leave that for the next video. For now, I've moved the layout around a bit and given the dropdown its own spot on the dashboard separate from the web player. And now I'm going to push all of these changes to GitHub. And after the workflows finished running, we can see that the dashboard did update and there's now an interactive dashboard that updates whenever the value changes on the dropdown. This is all powered just by GitHub Actions and GitHub Pages and Observable JS. We're not using Shiny here. We didn't need a Shiny server and we didn't have to pay any money to do this. If you're interested in learning about how to publish something like this using GitHub Actions and GitHub Pages, check out my earlier video in this playlist. Thanks so much for watching. I hope that you found this helpful. If you did, please be sure to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already done so, and I'll see you in the next video.